Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Have you got yeah. energy this morning? What have you no, been drinking? I'm what not. I'm drinking? recording right away. No, because no, because I feel like crying. Oh, <laughs> I see. Yeah. So you figure if you move fast, yeah, I, it's I'm going to be over sooner. That's <laughs> right. It's like walking between the raindrops. The tears won't catch up with me. <laughs> well, hi, Ivan. How are you? Uh, I, let me just, I got something to share. I'll share with you right now because I'll tell you why I feel like crying. I was watching something this morning, uh, this beautiful video, uh, a couple of dancers from the, from the Ballet of Canada and their family, along with members of the Toronto Symphony Orchestra playing box air on the G string as they dance in their home. What a great idea. Isn't this beautiful? And I watched this and I thought, can you hear the audio? Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. It's probably recording anyway. It's absolutely gorgeous. And these are two principal dancers, I think, with the ballet. And they go about doing their housework while they're dancing. <laughs> the kids. It's, yeah. it's just, it's quite something. And if, so if you want a good cry and feel sorry for yourself and for the rest of the world for about five minutes, you had a good I, cry, did you? Yeah, I put this on my uh, my page. I put it on the Grumpod page too. And these two beautiful people who were going about their oh, and she's in her curlers and everything. There she go, gorgeous. The TSO anyway. or members of the TSO. I don't even know if these are the same members. Yeah, here uh, we go, and we're doing oh, a bit of vacuuming. Oh God! Isn't that gorgeous? Anyway. Uh, that's just, that was my good cry for this morning. Well, beautiful movement can make you cry. Absolutely. They're just beautiful, they're beautiful movement. Can life, make you cry. life, beautiful people. And then from the sublime to the ridiculous, uh, news today that the, uh, there will be a glut of toilet paper in the coming, <laughs> in the coming weeks because a the glut. Yeah, the manu <laughs> yes, so to speak. The manufacturers have ramped up production to the point now where sometime this summer, uh, they will be dropping it off at your house for free. <laughs> because they, they along they, with a barrel of oil. That's right. Yeah, they're they're going. They they, they won't be, have enough room to put the stuff. So there we go. That's my share for this morning. Holy mackerel! Yeah. That in somebody's underpants. Boy, yeah. you you came flying out of the blocks, didn't I, you? I didn't. Uh, did I? Yes. Okay. Are we are yeah. we still sharing here? No. no. Yes. No. You got you got out of it very well. I I did taught I? you well. And okay. you've learned well. There we go. What, when did you see? So were you quietly weeping at about six o'clock this morning? I was you? listening. Well, I'm, I'm up very early doing work. I was listening to Paul Arquin this morning. One of his columnists mentioned this video. And, and I went right to my browser and looked it up. And there it was. And it was just beautiful. And I've been humming air on the G-string since about... Uh, six o'clock this morning on your g string yeah um actually uh, uh another group of tso musicians uh they didn't use uh, members of the royal canadian ballet uh but they they put together uh, a separate symphony and then they made a little film about how they coordinated it too right you i mean you and i can barely coordinate the two of us talking uh but <laughs> They, I, I think they ended up with about seven or eight of them and, and put together a lovely little opus. I can't remember what they, they ended up playing, Bach or something like that. Uh, but it was it's just a great idea, and yeah. they said it lifted their spirits as well. Yeah, Absolutely. And they were sitting around, you know, in their in T-shirts their and their, their ugly pajama bottoms. And uh, I think it, they said it helped them as much as they hoped it helped uh, people. I was bawling, bawling. Uh, for about 20 minutes. Yeah. So. Well, let's watch it again. I'd like to, I'd like to make you cry. Oh, you, you know, would, you would. The you? last yes, couple I'm, of days. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> no, empty I, now. Yeah. I'm going to call him, man. No, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna... right on the edge, you know. Uh, your McDonald's commercials <laughs> used to do it to me back in the day, you know. And I watch, uh... <laughs> an Ikea commercial almost puts me over the edge these days. <laughs> I remember the first time you mentioned that allusion to me. I laughed so hard. You said... Honda commercials can yeah. make me cry. Make me weep. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, let's 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 talk to Terrence Bowman, shall we? All right, Terry. Let, let us admit him. Uh, I have not seen Terrence in so many many years. There he is. There oh my is. goodness! I didn't know there was a beard now. 
No, you you haven't had a beard on. It was, uh, did you just paste that on this morning, Hunter? What did I just the, paste on? What the beard? The beard. We, we we didn't. We hadn't we seen the beard. Uh, no. Oh. Uh, no, I uh, I can't grow them that fast. Okay. But so it, this is yeah. from 1971, or? <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is my quarantine beard. I was going to say you look like that guy from the CDC there, the, the American guy with the. Uh, oh, Fauci. That, no, not Fauci, the older, the, the, the more portly gentleman there who stands way back. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah you're, no, you're not portly. No, 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 no. Right. I'm not the, saying the, Terrence uh, is portly. Look like oh, God, I don't we're know off which to a guy bad you mean, start. No. I beg pardon? I don't know which guy you mean. Okay, well, you, I, I will send you a photograph and then you will say, okay. oh, God, I'm never speaking to these assholes again. So there you go. Yeah. Very <laughs> nice. <clears throat> hey, you got a nice setup there. Yes. What, yeah. What is... yeah, this is my, uh, this is my downstairs office slash den. Well, and you collect, what is it that you collect there on your left side? Uh, there? I, I collect everything. Um, over here, these are DVDs, Blu-rays, even some VHS in there. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Have you well, still yeah. got a video player capable of playing the VHS? Yes. You do. I do. Too. Yeah, I do. I have a. I have a. I have one that's a um, combo VHS DVD recorder, so I can transfer stuff. You Should can't I even want to buy those it? anymore? Can you? No, 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 you can't. No, I got mine a few years ago. Let's begin with a plug here. You're doing something okay. tonight, are you not? Yes. Can you tell us about that? Yes, I am tonight. Yeah, sure. Uh, tonight on Instagram at 7 30, uh, myself and Josh Budman, who is uh, an old friend of mine who I've done tons of improv with over the years, uh, we're going to be doing a half hour of improv. And uh, we're doing it uh, in aid of uh, Mercy Mills Montreal, which is a group of McGill medical students who have got together. And what they do is they raise money, they go to restaurants, they buy food from these struggling restaurants, and then bring them the food to the uh, frontline healthcare workers in Montreal. So an evening of improv games uh, tonight, the 29th at 7.30 on Instagram, and you'll find them yep. at Bowman, B-O-W-M-A-N underscore Budman, B-U-D-M-A-N. And again, for a, a donation to the Montreal. Uh, Merci. The hair is very 70-ish. Yes. Sorry? You? The, the, the poster we just saw. The oh, hair yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's my Keanu look, you know. I hope you can act better than that. <laughs> uh, I can, I don't do him. So no, uh, sure. I, yeah. But, I, but I, we I'm don't... wondering, I'm wondering how you yeah. do improv separately. You, you guys are not in the same place. No, no, we can't be. Uh, well, that's well, right. You, be... you won't be in the same room. Of course. No, it's but we'll, we will be uh, like we're doing now, basically. Uh, so you will, we, we're going to, you'll see like a split screen thing on Instagram. We've already tested this out and, uh, we'll be, we'll be performing to each. I can see him. He can see me and we're performing, uh, improv that all has to be, uh, done in <laughs> like this area <laughs> That's right right too. Too. as yes. opposed to the large stages or even small stages that we're used to. So I, I guess you'll be able to get suggestions from viewers. Is that how it works? Yeah, yeah. You can uh, you can uh, always text comments onto the screen. So that's what we're going to be doing. I you see. type them in, and we take uh, we take suggestions that okay. way. Yeah. Talking asparagus. Go. Yeah. Talking asparagus. Well, asparagus go. is uh, one of the best vegetables in the world. It was voted best best vegetable in the world by the asparagus council of uh the globe always every year i didn't know that I didn't, can you tell i, I just I, made I, that I, up yeah I, I, i've learned mm, something mm, you know, usually i'm bullshitting him but and, that was very good and seen so uh we'll be relying on that too because we don't <laughs> have uh we can't we can't like black out and turn the lights down like we do on stage right yeah 
Okay, this is going to be a kind of a corny question, but uh, you are a performer, you are a freelancer, you are an actor, you do a number of things. Uh, yeah. Tough times for people like you who have to be on set or who would have otherwise been on set. Yeah. Uh, man, how are you uh, dealing with that? Uh, well, I, yeah, I do do a number of things. Uh, at the moment, that number is down to nothing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's it's kind of crazy. I, I work like you know, six different jobs, all sort of variations on performing and acting and that kind of thing. And uh, all of them, you know, that day that uh, Lego announced that they were shutting down the schools and all that, it, everything evaporated in like two hours. <laughs> I kept getting <laughs> all these emails and it was like, everything was gone. Uh, so, I mean, I, you know, I've been um, a little lost, but, uh, you know, Josh and I came up with this idea. So that's been taking up our time and that's been occupying me. So, um, yeah, it, it is, it's a very tough time. I mean, look, it's for an actor, it's a tenuous situation, no matter what, you know? Of course. Um, and so, I mean, there were a lot of, uh, a lot of people I know who were like, like I, I don't, I'm not making any money. I can't pay any bills. And I said, yeah, well, for me, that's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But you know, I'm not that I'm not, uh, unsympathetic to that because I certainly know what it feels like. You have a family in tow as well, kids? Uh, no, no kids. No kids. Okay. Nope. Nope. Uh, and how do you, me and how my do you partner. love it so much? I've often asked, I ask this of actors. It's the, it's the classic questions, actors, improv, stand-up comedians, people who do six. Why do you keep doing it so long? And I, it's not, you just have to, there must be something you love about it. Yeah. Well, you absolutely have to love it. Um, this is something I tell my students. I also teach uh, acting at MSOPA, and uh, which is short for Montreal School of Performing Arts. People always ask that. Um, and that's one thing I say, you got to love it. You absolutely have to love it. If you want to pursue this, you have to love it because there's no other good reason to do it. Yeah. Um, regular gigs, did you have a regular spot or regular spots on shows up until recently that we might know? Uh, well, I, was, I had a few auditions um, that oddly I haven't heard back about. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, and I was, yeah, I'm doing a lot of uh, simulation work. This is sort of my connection to Mercy Meals Montreal is that uh, I was doing what they call standardized patient work, which is uh, where I go into at McGill Medical School, I would go in and play patients in, in scenarios with the medical students. So, um, I, and I did that for a few other different things. I did that with uh, border guard training as well, which is out in Rigo. And I did that with RCMP. And so I was doing a lot of that stuff, but it's all stopped. Okay. Uh, so in, in, for example, in, in the medical context, you are yeah. what, a, a person who presents with X problem or X? Uh, yeah, X problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, any number had, of things. Had they operated on you by mistake in, in some way? These are just students after all, Terrence. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not really able to discuss that, but um, <laughs> okay, mistakes come up in some of them. That's all I can I say. say. Okay. <laughs> so you come in and sit down and say, uh, robots are stealing my kitchenware. And then it goes uh, that right. would be a psych scenario. Okay. Yes. Okay. And with the border people, you would be the recalcitrant American coming in. Any, again, you know, <laughs> national security, I can't really talk about it, oh, but uh, any number of things. Okay. okay. Any number of things that happen at the border. An actor's got to act, David. Yeah. I, Does that I answer your question? Yeah, no, yeah. I, yeah. I, was, <laughs> I was wondering, though, about improv in, in itself as a high wire act. You guys yeah. are in separate rooms and it's a head and shoulder shot. I gather you've worked on some, at least the mechanics, as you say, it's in oh, right? But you've got yeah. to work. What, what, what do you and, and Budman do? <laughs> well, me and Josh, well, what we've been doing is we, we've been doing like this. We've been doing either Zoom calls or Facebook calls, or we even tried it on Instagram once, uh, where we've been workshopping in this format, basically getting used to that. And one of the things we really had to get used to is that the suggestions come in way slower <laughs> than they do in a live show. You had people typing stuff in. So there's a lot of stuff to accommodate to, but 
basically, you know, I've been, I did my first improv show in 1989. So I, I have the experience and Josh does too. Josh has been doing it for, for a very long time too. Uh, and um, once you have those skills, once you know how to do it, then it's just a question of adapting to the format, whatever it might be. But if it's coming in by Instagram, you may have to do a shtick, if you will, mm -hmm. longer than you really <laughs> want to, right? Until something else comes along. Oh yeah, we in one of our workshops, uh, Josh's video cut out completely, and I improvised the monologue for about two minutes until I could get it. So you might see that. We okay. Don't know. Have you got a safe? <laughs> have you got a safe word that you can share with us? Uh, a signal or asparagus. asparagus asparagus okay so if we hear asparagus tonight we'll know that you're tanking and that you want budman to take over is that pretty uh cool? yeah yeah okay actually you know what you if you're that experienced you can read each other you don't even need to see yeah, asparagus. i'm sure i'm sure yeah. let's talk about the vestibules for a second how long ago yeah. was that because my long brain ago was my brain is that? losing a sense of time these days it seems like two weeks ago but it's not uh, to me, yeah, uh, also. Um, the vestibules, I think the last job we did, it was a writing job, was somewhere around 2008, 2009. Okay. Uh, and we, we formed in 1987. So anywhere in that. Seven, that's right. Yeah, you guys must have been babies. How old wow. were you? Early 20s? I was, I was 26. Oh, okay. Because I, I just listened to one of them uh, yesterday, and by God, they... they, they 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 still hang in there. They still it's hold the guy up. at the bus. Yeah. The guy at the bus stop. That is yeah, Bulba's Buffon. Oh. That is like our <laughs> biggest single. Really? <laughs> I mean, that's like we yeah, that one was phenomenally popular. It really surprised me because I didn't I thought it was just kind of too weird, but it really did take off. And we have, and you can go on YouTube and check this out. Uh, we constantly, it still happens sometimes, we get requests from kids in uh, high school or or uh, yeah, mostly in high school, who want to perform the sketch live, and they're asking for our permission to do it. And of course, we always give it to them. And if you go on YouTube, you can see recordings. There's like got to be at least a dozen different school recordings of like 13, 14 year old kids performing Bulbous Buffon and imitating us exactly, too. Um, and then there's fan videos that people have made of it. Some of them are really interesting. Some of them are quite bizarre. If just look up Bulbous Buffon on YouTube, and I'm I'm stunned at Galoshes. the reception that has. Wow, mm -hmm. interesting. Galoshes, <laughs> Galoshes, Macadamia. Yeah, <laughs> I was at a show at Just for Laughs once. I was watching a show at Just for Laughs, and uh, suddenly I heard in my ear somebody said Macadamia. And I turned around and I looked everywhere. I have no idea who that person was to this day. I have no idea. Did you guys have any idea? Yeah. I mean, I know it's, it's, it's improv, but it turned into a kind of a symphony, right? There was a musical bent yeah. towards the end, right? Well, yeah. In the vestibules, we had the advantage of writing and rehearsing things in advance, unlike, um, yeah. I, unlike improv. But yeah, it did just kind of, it did sort of just kind of balloon that way, is we just started playing around with funny words. And then I think it was Bernard, Bernard Denigé, one of the other members, yeah. Paul Perry being the other guy. Uh, and I think it was his idea because we had a four track, we had a cassette four track recorder. That's how long ago it was. God. And he just got this idea of, of doing other tracks of people saying other words. And then we put a metronome to it so that we could keep a beat. And we just came up with these words. And, uh, and I thought, you know, at that time, it was going to go on our series on that was only on Radio McGill at the time. Um, and I just thought, well, you know, it fills three minutes of airtime. I don't know if anyone's going to like this. Uh, <laughs> I found it fascinating. I loved it. But, uh, and, you know, after a while, we would start to get, uh, you know, um, we'd start to get feedback because the feedback originally wasn't good. We'd play it for our stand up friends and then going, well, wow, where's the jokes? What are you, what are you guys doing? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, there are no and, jokes. Uh, and, but then we, we started getting, you know, we'd hear word of mouth and then we'd start getting letters and along, how long ago it was letters. And then uh, we submitted it to the Dr. Demento show in the U S who is like the king of novelty records. And uh, possibly he's still doing a show. I don't know. He was doing it for oh, a long God, time. Really? What do you mean? 
You think so? I don't know. But I don't know. I've heard it for 40 years. Yeah, right? but it's still yeah. out there. It's still in the ether yeah. for sure. It's still yeah. in the ether for sure. Whether he's still doing a show or not, I don't know. But yep. <clears throat> we became um, the most requested spoken word piece of his show. Uh, certainly of the 90s. I don't know about beyond that. Wow. But yeah. Yeah. Because it starts from a completely different place when I started hearing it. If you, if you haven't heard it, folks, it's a guy waiting at a bus stop and there's a weird person with him. Right? Yes. And it, it, it begins as the worst possible wait for a bus you could possibly think of, right? It, it's just terror. We got a little. Yeah, ticket. it's just one of these guys who has the, the real sense of boundaries and just keeps talking to this guy about all these weird things and saying stuff like mucklucks and. Uh, and, and <laughs> that's um, the that's yeah. the word I remember. <laughs> yeah. I think mucklucks. Mucklucks yes. comes to me faster than macadamia. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh mine is galoshes. Yeah. Galoshes, beluga, beluga whales, <clears throat> and um, also macadamia. But that was local. Paul, wasn't it? uh it was it was me and bernard paul's oh. the guy who comes in on uh, ploy <laughs> it's paul if i remember correctly paul's the guy who comes in on the uh, on the multi-track thing and stuff okay um okay. and then in the live version we would we divided it up so it's me and paul waiting at the bus stop and bernard's the weird guy okay that's probably the version i saw okay yeah All yeah right. Yeah, and he, the, the, the third guy in there, whoever it is of the three of you, really gets into it right away. He isn't weirded out at all, right? He's having the time yeah. of his life. Yeah, Yeah, that's right. There's a second guy. You're, you're reminding me now. Yeah, a second guy shows up at the bus stop, and, and the guy who's waiting thinks, which was me, yes, thinks that, oh, this is my, you know, savior, a normal person who's going to, and then the first thing that guy says is macadamia. <laughs> well, just one more that I've... Yeah thought and it's got to be one of your favorites too is the guy who is the unilingual anglophone applying for a job and he's got to be bilingual yes so he fakes a terrible french accent to make yeah. the guy think he's a french canadian our second biggest hit is it uh, yeah yeah and and the guy says uh at one point the interviewer says well you you have um you you know, you you sound French, but you have a very English name. It's O'Leary, and then the guy says, "Oh no, it's pronounced uh, Thibodeau." <laughs> 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 Is that Paul who does that part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does yeah. it very for well. Ages, we were doing it. That wasn't in the original version. We were doing it live for a long time, and we kept getting the feedback because we used to do it. He would say, "Oh no, it's pronounced O'Leary." <laughs> and um, which is bad, but we kept getting the feedback from there's got to be a funnier line, there's got to be a funnier line there. And then one day, Paul just said, It's pronounced Tibado, and Thibodeau. It stayed. That, that's that's just that kills it right there, yeah, yeah. Well, in, on, in the version I saw on YouTube yesterday, when he says Tibado, the I don't know where you guys were at the comedy festival or something, the audience just collapses. It's yeah, yeah that's either from Just for Laughs or possibly from the Winnipeg Comedy Festival. Yeah. Wow. So you know what? You know what I noticed interesting about that sketch is over the years it got less and less and less laughs because you had a generation who was growing up more, much more bilingual than like my generation, for instance. Um, and it became it just sort of became less funny for them because they didn't really understand, didn't really relate to it. So that was an interesting thing. We eventually, believe it or not, dropped it from the live show because it mm. wasn't really it just wasn't connecting with audiences anymore. That is very interesting. Times have changed. Not funny. Good luck tonight. Yes, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, break a leg tonight, Terrence. Thanks a lot, Bob. Thank you. And uh, it's right. on Instagram, Thank you. right? Thanks for having me, guys. Sure. And, uh, it's on Instagram. It's on Instagram, yes. Despite the fact you're advertising like crazy on Facebook, it's on Instagram. And we're going to attempt to record it so that people who don't have Instagram but do have Facebook can see it there. Great. Super. Well, we're, we're plugging it on our page. So we'll break a leg. Have a good evening. We'll be watching. Enjoy. Have fun. All right. Oh, Thanks, guys. Wow. All right. Good bye -bye. Thanks, Terrence. Bye now. Terrence Bowman. <clears throat> I tell you that I stand-up comedy frightens me. You've done a lot of stand-up. I've done the a little bit. The idea frightens me. It's, the idea uh, of improv terrifies me. I've done a little bit of that, too, but I was a dabbler. So people like Terrence and others would look askew at, at people like me because I was in there and then I was gone and I was playing around. But uh, no, when you're in it to win it like <clears throat> Terrence and Paul and Bernard Deniger and all kinds of other people whom we know. Uh, it's, 
comedy is serious business, technically, right? When you yeah. get down to it, so. Yeah, I mean, it, people, people, you know, there is a lot of preparation involved yeah. in improv. Yeah. There's gotta you, be. You gotta know, you gotta think on your feet and you have to, and it gets back to what we're, it reminds me what we were talking to Brian Murphy about earlier this week too. It's like live TV. You gotta, you gotta pull down your pants and slide on that ice and go. We have no choice. Yeah. You gotta keep, yeah. the, keep things going along, so. Yeah, one chance to hit the bullseye. There you go. 7.30 tonight, you'll find the poster on our webpage and uh, on Instagram with Terrence Bowman and his, his buddy Budman and uh, for a good cause. So. Yeah. Tomorrow, then. Paul Grafe is with us tomorrow. Paul is a journeyman broadcaster. He works in Ganawagi these days for the FM station down there, but he's been around, my goodness. You worked with Paul at CBC, did you not? Paul was doing the morning sports when I was on daybreak, and Jim Coward was the news announcer. There you go. Again, time flies, but uh, yeah. Paul probably has a lot to say about what's going down, going down, uh, down Ganawagi way, and we'll check in with him tomorrow. Okay, then we'll check in with you tomorrow as well. You, you got us off to a flying start. We almost, we almost hit the tarmac. There My you go. God. I, I'm going to go muck luck myself, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go loshes. All right.